Welcome to the Winston-Salem Cycling Classic 2023. My name is Will Harden. I race for Project Echelon, and this is my home race. Last year, had a pretty good race, um, got third place, so I was actually able to feature on the local news. I'll be doing a race commentary here, but first I'm going to open with that lo local news uh, clip. Bikes and bands are taking over downtown Winston-Salem right now. We are super stoked to have this event back in Winston-Salem. Brand new pavement on all race courses this year. We have last year's star of the show coming back. He was third place last year. Yeah, last year, uh, it was actually my first year doing it in the pros, and oh. I just did that from the gun. I mean, you get to do street sprints tonight, where it's like, these cyclists don't get the chance to like do what's called a street sprint, which is- So starting with the street sprints, Streets of Fire, um, it was in heats, and yeah, we would just go as hard as you can for 200 meters. I'm not the best candidate for this. I ended up advancing on to the next round after the first one, which was a surprise. I actually just showed up in like jean shorts and a baggy shirt. This second round here that I did, I was up against a like pro BMX racer and Eli, who's got a good sprint on him, both from Velocious Sport. You'll be able to see Kit, the BMXer on the end here. He wiped us away pretty good. I was actually able to get in the draft for both of those guys, but it was a fun night on Friday. Kind of sets the tone for the race weekend, and Robert Sierra from ACG ended up winning the sprints there. Going on to the actual race here, the start finish is on an uphill. I got a front row call up because of last year's performance and wanted to attack from the gun again, but Tyler Williams was able to clip in really fast. We were pretty packed in on the front row and he got a good start. Uh, Michael Hernandez here, he actually followed his wheel and then I came around into the first corner. Uh, I've done that corner a lot, so I know the speed you can go through it and I took it all the way to the curb there. So we got a good distance on the whole field. Um, that opening stretch was pretty hard. It was almost a full sprint uh, just starting out, and you can see the whole field is very stretched out into the next corner. The course is a figure eight. It goes up the hill right next to Bailey Park, and then it takes a right that you're seeing on screen here, and then it goes through another few blocks and under the bridge that is the start finish, which you can see us coming through right here in the race footage. Then it takes another few left-handers that are a little tighter. You don't quite have to break for them, but if you're coming in after an attack, you do have to sort of scrub some speed. Not a lot of not a lot of finish stretch, so there's only like 150, 200 meters into the into the finish from the last turn, so it's important to be first to third wheel into that last turn if you're going to win the race. Um, but the uh, the race broke down how it usually does, very hard start um, until the field is pretty broken down. Here you can see the breakaway of the day up the road. Six guys made it up the road. One guy would come back from Velocious, but uh, yeah, overall, I think I think there was a group of six and then five lapped, or a group of seven and six lapped. The field, me, uh, the UNC Lotto Max guy there, and Eli, none of us had or we all had guys in the move, and we would just kind of shut down the field, which let the breakaway lap pretty quickly. Um, I think they lapped, usually it's hard to lap on this course just because it's so, so long, um, but I think they lapped with like 16 or 17 laps to go, um, which is like less than an hour of racing in which it took them to lap. Here Eli's kind of checking with me whether or not I have a teammate up the road, and. I do. Uh, a lot of the big teams all had guys up the road. Uh, Kelly Benefits was there with a, probably the biggest squad, and they got one guy up the road, which is pretty good for them. And then, yeah, no no teams were really willing to do a concerted chase that had guys that could do it. So it just ended up being a lot of moves, very hard racing while the break was up the road, but nothing would really stick in any significant way. Just made it very difficult. Here you can see Robert Sierra me and Hayden Strong from MitoQ going for a $100 preem. Hayden let a little gap go into that, so we didn't actually sprint Robert for the preem, but I kind of wanted to attack over top. My teammate uh, is not a 
like specifically a sprinter, so I kind of want to get up into the move just to get us a better chance at a, a podium or a top placing. So I did keep attacking a few times once I realized that break was well and stuck, but trying not to pull the field along, and it ended up not quite working. A lot of moves of like five to six guys would end up going off the front, and then every once in a while I'd have to bridge to it or like weld to it. Um, but it ended up being a pretty hard race without going too fast in the in the period between the break going and the break coming back. Just yeah, quite hard, very surgy. But on the back stretch, we wouldn't really maintain that much momentum, so attacks would go back there too. Into those last few corners, I really enjoy ripping that last one. Um, I can yeah figure out a good line and go pretty fast through it, and then get momentum up into this uphill and usually that's a good place for me to attack over the top of the uphill just because I haven't spent quite as much energy as like the average bear in the race and then I can kick it into this last corner too just because I'm so familiar with it living just down the road from this course and having done it plenty of times. This is the point where the break actually catch catches the field. I'm kind of saying welcome back to Hernandez there once I see him. Tyler Williams from Legion also lapped the field. He doesn't have any teammates here, but was able to secure pretty good placing in that breakaway. And then my teammate, Steven, you'll see him in the rear view cam, is actually coming up to me. We have a little chat about, like, it's not exactly what we planned on, um, but it does give us a good chance at a good placing. And I'm kind of realizing that for Steven to win, we need to make this race... Uh, solo breakaway for him, pretty much. Um, he's a very good steady rider, rider. He's a good diesel and can motor away. He At Armed Forces one year, he soloed and won the Clarendon Cup second day. So he's very good at soloing crits and has got the power for it. And then once I'm thinking that, we're just kind of running through kind of in my head what our plan should be. The, a wrench gets thrown in. Simon Daniels actually attacks, so the race is starting to get pretty hard um, after they lap here. The breakaway is starting once once they lap, they started to like kind of attack each other, so I actually go to the front and try to even out the pace a little bit, just to kind of shelter Steven. I know he's not going to be able to bridge to all those moves if they keep attacking. I would eventually sit on the front for like two or three laps, kind of even out the pace, and then... Um, attacks would start going again but yeah this this little intermission period just trying to save steven's legs and then tyler williams would attack up the side again trying to get away um from simon and hernandez and the other breakaway mates there i was able to sit in on this i just kind of sagged this hill so saved plenty of energy and then once the field caught back on um they sat up there so this whole lap, I got to save a good bit of energy. Coming back around into this hill, I uh, I noticed the field just sit up, and I felt pretty fresh. So I attacked quite hard and managed to solo for about nine laps. Um, I came like 30 seconds from the back of the field solo, and then um, yeah, I'd gotten to a pretty good pace in those nine laps where I was doing like five, six hundred watts up the hill, and then a good tempo on the long back stretch just to kind of recover and to keep the pace as high as I could. It's so eventually joined by six other riders, Forrest Howard here for Just Ride Bikes, or Ride Bikes Bro. He ended up catching and he was driving this move pretty well. There were three other Kelly guys in this move. Usually I would expect them to kind of get on the front and drive the pace so that they could lap the field also. But I think they were pretty gassed and they ended up doing kind of like a, a reverse breakaway deal where they just let the gap go to their teammates and such and so our momentum died pretty good in this breakaway we weren't able to lap the field in it um, and get back on the lead lap but we came into the finish with this full group together um, and the sprint was pretty hard there was a gambler preem that we were actually eligible for so forest ended up winning that like 500 hundred dollar gambler preem and then i sprinted for third in that group um, in the end, it would be Simon Daniels who took home the top step, 
for UNC Lotto Max there, and then Tyler Williams in second for Legion, Michael Hernandez in third for American Cycling Group. My teammate Steven would get fourth. I ended up in ninth. It was a pretty fun night. You race around that park where a concert is, therefore being the Gears and Guitars Festival. So you can hear some pretty cool bands um, playing in there, and then the concert's free. So after the race, we went to the concert and just kind of hung out. If you haven't done this race weekend before, I definitely recommend it. It's probably my favorite course, very hard race, um, and usually is quite a challenging weekend if you do street sprints as well. Hopefully they'll bring back the road race next year to, to kind of have a fully rounded race weekend like they used to. But this was an awesome event. Definitely recommend coming out there. Thanks for watching the video. Do the whole like and subscribe thing if you can. I'll be putting out a video on IndyCrit later this year, or later in the next few weeks. And then um, Gateway Cup I'll also be doing. Thanks. See ya.